next one. Yeah. yeah. The next one. What you see. You gonna let it play? What you see. Words that I'm spitting, slap, boxing, popping, words, words for the, the hit and see we go in the scene, fighting and come out writing, speaking in tongues, ironically hung to the society, see, don't let nobody steal away your rights to be free, caps your essence, capitalizing your absence, will tell you that the value of the chosen few won't be diminished if you allow them all to finish what they start, seeing until cross the street from all art history, is where we should lie futuristically. Hello, this is Straight Up, Straight Up out of Brooklyn, Straight Up can be found on YouTube under the channel Straight Up Stella O. Go to Straight Up Stella O to see this show as well as other shows of Straight Up. My guests today are two visual artists, Isis Swabi, aka Isart, and Ashley Sabone. I'd like to welcome both of them to Straight Up. Hello. <laughs> okay, did I get that right, Isis? Isis Swaby, but Swaby can work. Swaby, and, uh, I messed up. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. You can okay. eyes are in more. Okay. Because I, that's what I'm going to basically put on my, all my paintings. So. You're going to put art and it's more? It's on everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. I have so how would you come up with that name, that. Well, Explain. Well, when I was 17 years old, um, I was uh, like trying to figure out how can I be something else but still do art. Because I don't think Isis fully really identifies with my art. Isis is like pretty and... You know, it's a girly name, so I thought of something more masculine. So I thought eyes art would be interesting to stamp on my paintings with. Okay. And that's my initials and the word art, and art is me, it's my life. So, so that was your creative way of coming up with, with a name. Now, the two of you uh, came together to put a show on that I attended called Touch and Feel My Walls. And I went up to the gallery up in Harlem, uh, Shashama, right? Mm -hmm. That's, I have that right. And you collaborated on this because you both work on the same themes, women's sexuality. Yeah. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah. Because your, your art always touched on sex in some sort of way for women. And your, yours is a story of yeah. one particular woman. Yeah. But they were different enough for me where it was a, a very interesting show. Mm -hmm. How'd you mean? Well, first of all, you're a young <laughs> visual artist. How old are you, Isis? I'm 21. And how old are you, Ashley? 22. Okay. <laughs> Close in age. Did you go to the same school? No. 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 So how did you mean? Well, um, two summers ago, I went to a business camp at Columbia University called Nifty. And there was this great, interesting African-American entrepreneur named John Gray. And I was so intrigued by his story about him struggling and finally somehow having some kind of hand in the fashion industry. So I asked him for an internship. And then um, I finally got a, caught up with him like a year later because he was so busy with his life. I harassed uh -huh. him. <laughs> and then we met Andy and DeLuca and I um, went to a photo shoot to help him uh, select some sunglasses out and I was just helping him with whatever he needed help with. And then I, on the photo shoot, I met Ashley's boyfriend, who's a model, <laughs> okay. uh, professional model, and we all just basically became friends and mm -hmm. meshed well. Now, when, when you met, uh, you talked about your art. Yeah. Did you realize during that first meeting that you had something in common in terms of like Not the really. themes that <laughs> you were? My boyfriend in? told me about ISIS. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, I'm with this really cool artist, and you guys should really link up. You guys are interested in a lot of the same things." And um, when I met her, she had these cute little business cards, <laughs> and she gave me one of them. And I like I contacted her, you know, because I had just moved to New York like a few months before that, so I didn't know anyone mm -hmm. um, from where. Yeah, from, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I moved to New York from North Carolina. I went to school down there for um, business marketing, mm -hmm. and I transferred. I moved to New York just because I it, that just wasn't the place for me. You know, what's Milwaukee like? Milwaukee what was it like growing up in Milwaukee? It's very suburban. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a public high school. It is 
it's it. I mean, it's it's a city. It's just we have like our downtown is nothing yeah. like New York. It's just very suburban. I had okay. a I had a grass. Okay. <laughs> you don't get that in New York. <laughs> well, let's 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 let Central Park. <laughs> okay, but I had grass in my front lawn. Okay, so you had <laughs> I was I was raised in New York City, so we were like totally opposites, but somehow we um, collaborated. So what somehow. part of New York were you raised in? Everywhere. All right. I don't like being specific. Come on. Kind of stuff. <laughs> but, um, no, well, with Burrow. Like, lived, you're in Brooklyn I, I now. I lived in Harlem for, since my childhood, and then I also um, moved to New Jersey for three years for high school. Okay. So that's actually when I started, like, really getting spiritually like uh, launching my art by okay. myself in my bedroom painting every day after school okay because in new york it's a lot of distractions but in new jersey it was like easy to focus because there's nothing to do besides do art so so your exhibit uh, of your pieces you had uh i think like uh, six or seven pieces right yeah yeah i uh, added two extra ones that were actually older paintings that i did when i was 19. But these are the most recent, those five ones that you have listed. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to begin with the first one because yeah. I drink so much coffee. It's probably, <laughs> it's one of my guilty pleasures. And you hit on uh, how Americans uh, love coffee so much and fur. And it was called... Uh, put your put hand your, through my window. Put your hand. And the you had Amer the green Amer slime Amer in Amer it. Slime. Yeah, and I learned <laughs> about the Nickelodeon show? Yeah. Green Slime. Well, when I was a kid, I used to watch that show. Like It was like called like Green, like Slime Your Head or something. Slime You, Slime Shot. I don't know what it was called, but it was like they slime. They would drop a bucket of slime on your head. Okay. And then basically it was just like that's the point of the show. Like if you mess up on a question or something, they're like, you get slime, slime. Slime him. So what does that have to do with coffee <laughs> and fur? <laughs> so I feel like coffee is like a daily slime. You, you don't need to drink it. It's not something you have to drink for religion purpose it's no, just like for you to true. drink it just to be kind of hyper it feels drink. good it's like a little like, <laughs> pick me up in the morning like, okay like, but to you a slime okay yeah uh, and the fur also i feel like that's like some kind of form of like something that you don't need but you must buy it's like a luxury good you need to have yeah. for winter and the coffee is kind of like a luxurious thing with starbucks or with like a nice cafe that's charging you five dollars for a cup of coffee like it's a drink yeah, yeah so i feel like it's kind of on the same wavelength okay their well. marketing strategy like you want to aspire to like be something so <laughs> it, it, you you don't need them but you you do need them you, you do need them to give you an illusion of warmth and, and luxury. Yeah. And I got you. So it's all connected. Yeah. Got it. And then the little uh, silver trays on the the canvas sheet is um, representing, well, I have a story why I have those silver trays. Because two years ago, I wanted to make lip balm. And I feel like I was going like, to be like a lip balm specialist. So <laughs> <laughs> I bought like, all these trays and started making lip balm. Okay. But then I realized that's not my calling. So I just cut that out. And I just decided to add it to the painting because okay. it represents the... Um, Cavator belt, like mm -hmm. in a factory where they make coffee. Okay. So. Now your exhibit uh, was touchable art. Yours also, Ashley, mm -hmm. touchable art. Mm -hmm. So you can actually you invite anyone that um, comes to yeah. the gallery to to touch and feel it. Like, and th the next one I want to talk about. You have uh, you have a cutout shape of your body. Ashley and it, sketched me. Oh, Ashley sketched me. It was a quick, was a quick thing. It was like a quick outline of her like laying on the painting. And but I it was supposed to be it, a dead body. So a yeah. dead body. Like being persecuted by society. And, and by the labels that society puts on. So yes. you have uh, people, like, people come up and write on it. Yeah. So uh, you get to At write. At first I did my own labels and I was like, uh, why did I do the whole thing by myself? So I basically invited the guests to like write the labels they want to call people good things or bad things like one, of my, bad? one of my friends is like obsessed with oprah so she put oprah okay <laughs> she like loves oprah so. okay so what oh, I, someone wrote like slut and different things <laughs> scarlet like a. i wrote scarlet a because i read that book when i was a kid growing up okay. it's like being persecuted for something you did that's just a human quality but people just judge you on everything okay so. that was interesting yeah and then you also have march of the frogs yeah and that's hope by hopping that's what i came hope up with on ho hope by ho hopping along i i, I that's what well, i came up with when frogs, i when i saw it was march it. of the frogs hop on hope hop on hope <laughs> oh, okay i got it all so basically the concept is like i don't really like 
drawing human beings anymore. I'm kind of over humans. But I think creatures are interesting. I think humans people, are passe, huh? And I think <laughs> creatures are kind of like humans in a way. How they interact with each other. They just can't speak really. They just make noise. But I feel like I'd rather do frogs because it's a little bit more funnier. And also the animals basically are like striving for something that's what mm. it represents like your aspiration in your life to be somewhere like everyone wants to be affluent and have money and mm -hmm. do great things and it's kind of like being in heaven but if you're broke and you're in poverty you're kind of in hell so right here on earth but yeah. it was a busy uh piece because you, you had spongebob it also represents some of the american culture yes and, like, what people you had a pair of Walmart underwear, red, white, and blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Walmart's very American. Everyone, th everyone likes things cheap but New York and wholesale. City doesn't have a Walmart, but so. we do have one coming. Oh, okay. My friend interns there now, so we have one coming up. So okay. we'll be here. I love Walmart. We'll be so. Walmart to <laughs> And you also had built a beer on there. Yeah. I was drawing those little bears because that's part of my new concept for my next paintings. I'm gonna do some graffiti around New York with teddy bears. Okay. But like romantically depressed teddy bears. Romantically <laughs> depressed. And you you have one piece where it's called Downfall and that's to represent depression. Yeah, that's when I was nineteen. I was going through a lot of interning and doing a lot and mm. I was kinda of alone a lot all the time. So I was just painting kind of darker paintings okay. in. And that's why. And you, okay, so and then I'll, I'll save the, uh, the cloudy more. butt for last, okay? <laughs> cloudy the butts. Clou cloudy butts. But you also have a piece called Down the Road of Lust. Cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha, yeah. cha -cha -cha, like the dance. Yes. Cha -cha -cha. Okay. Well, <laughs> one day I was just, I don't know, I had like a random like vision. I kind of have those a lot. Ever since I was like a kid, I like see things and curtains and like see things. You just have to draw it real quick. You mean like you'll see a shadow or you'll see a cloud? No, and, and I just you have a vision in my head like oh, about okay. what something should be before I do it. Oh, so I kind okay. of envisioned this painting that it would be like doll heads in a circle with blood dripping, but I really didn't know what it meant at the time. It just came to me. Wow. I don't know. A miracle baby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it just happened. So, um,. When I started actually doing it, it was really hard to do the painting because I had to glue all the eyes back or whatever because their eyes wouldn't stay open, the little doll mm -hmm. heads. And I had to buy 36 dolls and like make sure they're all perfectly aligned and secure because wow. one of them actually fell off, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so you, you're working on this piece, and what did it come to mean to you? After having well, after the vision actually and doing it. Fully doing it hands on was like, wow, I have to figure out what this would mean to people and what it would mean to me. And for me, it, it was like a representation of like, just like people going through struggles in their lives, which might be an abortion, and coming to that point in their life where they have to have a baby or maybe not have the baby, but in the baby's life. And I feel like all the babies are angels. So that's what uh, those green wings represent. And that's the flower bed at the bottom of the painting that represents the babies going to heaven, or flower heaven. Wow. And then the top is the mother's belly, which is like bleeding inside. Because when you do abortions, it's for a lot of blood yeah. and a lot of loss. So, so deep. That's a deep piece of <laughs> And then the door is actually going like in a circle, like a dance. Uh -huh. Cha cha cha. So that's how that flows. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Give me pause something to think about wow okay all right now to cl cloudy butts and it's based on a, a yoko ono film yeah i did um i love yoko ono Here okay what see. film because i couldn't catch it's it it's called buttocks it's called but buttocks yeah and she made a film about she butts. made it like 1964 i think 1967 and was it like a documentary style or was yeah, it, it was like a wrong? short film but also i actually really only saw little snippets of it because i went to the moma and they had an exhibit with um it had it as a painting instead mm -hmm. it had like pictures of butts on this wall and i was like wow this is really amazing it'd be great to do some kind of painting with butts and ever since i was a kid i kind of was infatuated with bodies and butts bodies and butts <laughs> men women alike so. okay so you just like looking at the backside. It wasn't a vision that you look up in the cloud. That oh, oh you do. Well, I, that I, looks like I, a butt. I remember <laughs> joking around telling Ashley I was gonna make a painting with like cloudy butts. I was like, it would be funny. But then like I also do look at clouds and I see that they're like, I feel like they're like nature's butts. Okay. So. Well. <laughs> now I noticed with cloudy butts that there's a carry over in 
to Ashley's art. And Claddy, but you used like the rhinestones. Is it rhinestones? For the dimples and the butt. For the dimples, yeah, the cellulite. (laughs) I feel like cellulite people like view it as a bad thing. I feel like it's just a part of your body. It's just the way it is. So it should be like cellulite is not smooth and pretty to look at. It's like cottage cheese. Come on. (laughs) Well, yeah, but in a way, I feel like a lot of people have cellulite. (laughs) I feel like a lot of people do have cellulite. I feel like yeah, most women do. The plastic little studded diamond looking imitation little studs represent like. The beauty in the cellulite. Okay. Well, thank you. Now we come <laughs> to you, Ashley, because I noticed in a lot of your pieces in, mm-hmm. in the show, you use the rhinestones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, yours is a story, right? Right. Yours is, yours is a story of one woman and her journey through life and her uh, relationship with her, her sexuality mm-hmm. or how she uses sex. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the story. Okay, so when um, we decided to have the Touch and Fill My Walls um, art show, we decided that we would touch on, like, sexuality and how we felt about, like, America and do it in somewhat of a humorous way, by, but also allow people to touch the artwork. So we wanted things to have, like, you know, dimensions and to have layers or whatever. But my story was about a woman who... Um, it starts off in her youth. I didn't name her. The um, first piece was entitled Her Face. It was just a painting of the woman's face. And then um, the um, first two mm-hmm. paintings that it starts with is Diamond Puss and Bubble Butt. And these are representations of her when she's at her prime. She's young. She's vivacious. She has a beautiful body. She uses it to get what she wants. Bubble Butts is just, you know, she had a perfect ass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, that's what a lot of people, you know, pride themselves on is, like, how wonderful their body looks. And then it goes into Diamond Puss where she is using her, she's using that perfect body to get what she wants. Get what she wants. Mm -hmm. Materially. Materially, which a lot of women do. They the men she wants, the mm-hmm. things she wants, mm-hmm. the diamonds she wants. Like, there were diamonds on Diamond Puss, okay. obviously. Um, and that just relates to how people use their sexuality and use their bodies in order to get material things. And I noticed that a lot in the media, and it's perpetuated, like, constantly that, you know, you can use yourself to get things, or you are a commodity, you're... You know. Now, and you're you're growing up as as a teenager mm-hmm. and also as a young adult. Do you find that you run into a lot of women that operate that way? Definitely. They, is, is yeah, that, I know a lot of women who operate that way, and it's, and it's it's like second nature to them. And I know a lot of men who expect women to operate that way, and they treat women as if, oh well, you know, I give you these things, you give me yourself in return. And I know a lot of women who say, well, I want this, I want this, I want that. They don't really know how to get it on their own, so they use their bodies to persuade other people to get it for Mm -hmm. them. Okay. You have a third piece that, well, actually part one and part two, Mm -hmm. and it's called The Mystery Man. Yeah. Explain that part of the woman's journey. Okay, so this one isn't necessarily as humorous, but Mystery Man part one and part two are a depiction of the woman in the story later on in her life when she is, you know, more aware of herself. She appreciates her body more. She's um, just a little more mature. And she basically is looking back on the things that she's done in her past and realizing, Mm -hmm. okay, I've done this, you know, I've used my body, I've abused it, I've let other people use and abuse it, and now that I'm, I can reflect on that, you know, she's hanging her head in shame a little bit because she's like, you know, I should have valued myself a little bit more than that. You know, I'm worth more than a ring or a nice pair of shoes Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? So, um, Mystery Man part one and two, one is a depiction of her like from behind and she's hanging her head down in shame. You can't see her her face or her head or anything she's hanging her head down in her lap and she has um spikes coming out of her spine and that's like a representation Mm -hmm. of like she 
has let these people use her and it like hurts her to the core. So that was a representation of her pain. And then the other one was just her from the front and it's showing like she's not the same person that she was. She doesn't have, you know, that nice, slim, perky, you know, perfect body anymore, but she's still beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she's realizing that and she doesn't need to use herself or let other people use her. So is that the end of her journey or is there is yet another piece? Yes, woman, um, right? I'm working on more pieces. I'm not sure how far into that story I'm going to go. Okay. Um, but there was one more piece that was, it, it was kind of, it was somewhat connected to the story, but the style was a bit different. Um, it was a mixture of cutouts and wood, and that was called Dirty Mouth. And Dirty Mouth was basically like a representation of the, it's, a, it's a dirty painting. It's a representation of the people who have been with her. And she has, in the pic, it has, it's just a mouth. It's lips and then teeth. And they're scattered teeth. It's not a full row of teeth or whatever. But there have been people that she's let in and out of her life. And it's a representation of that. The teeth have layers and they flap up and down or whatever. And it, I, or I remember that with that particular piece, you could write on it, like the piece that mm -hmm. Isis has where you could write on the body, you could also write on the teeth. Mm -hmm. So you would write, what, different men's Different names, names different words, okay. whatever you felt like. If you would write different men's names, it was like a reputation. Like, she's had so many men that she's been involved with. Like, she can't even remember. That's why Mystery Man Part 1 and 2 were called Mystery Man mm -hmm. because... At some point, she realizes she doesn't know how many men she slept with. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know, you know, she doesn't remember how all of them may have, you know, looked or mm -hmm. how they treated, like, themselves or she didn't get to know them very well or whatever. So she was just being what, very promiscuous. <laughs> what was it like to collaborate <laughs> uh, together on this particular show? It was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. It was good. How did it come together? It was called "Touch and Feel My Walls." How, how Touch did and feel how, my walls? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know that sounds uh, so sensual. I mean, a lot so of people, sexual. A lot of people come together. Like, oh, they it's took it the so, wrong way. Like, your <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. It's about paintings and canvases and just interacting with the paintings. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were hanging out in the MoMA like last winter 2009 and we went to um tim burton's exhibit and like he had a lot of cool art and also he had a lot of mixed media paintings and he also had statues and little movies he did and i was like wow it'd be cool if he actually actually could touch this art mm -hmm. and they're like no you can't touch it and then one of her Everything friends was glassed off one of her friends tried to touch cases. it and they're like oh no don't touch it so i felt like it would be cool if we did a show like i kind of had an idea about it but i wasn't really working on it and then we decided to like really work on it and put it together and like collaborate and, and it. how long did time. it take to do it since that <laughs> since then that okay. was like yeah, last year so last year so a year <laughs> under okay. a year pretty much i mean i applied for the space through kashama and then we finally got to plan things out more and see mm -hmm. what the space was like and also, let's talk about the the glittery sl slippers that you got up there. The glittery slippers. Yeah, that was so oh. nice. Oh yes, yeah, I'm from Christopher, <laughs> one of the other artists mm -hmm. who um, works in Kashama. Mm -hmm. We became friends with him through the time we had our show there for that week. So he gave us gifts. Yeah, he was lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, he was King David, right? Very yeah. inspirational. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in closing, uh, how long? Let me know how long this particular um, show will go on, or is it is it going to is, well, it, it, is it over? Is ended? The gallery hours are over, but we did another show um, this past Friday um, in the Upper West Side mm -hmm. um, at this space. Well, it continue to show. Street. 60, mm -hmm. 62nd Street in Central Park West. It's not there anymore now. Okay, um, but we definitely want to do um, continue our artwork. Yeah, we both so. created a few new pieces for the second show. Okay. Um, Isis extended the um, Down the Road of Lush Cha 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 oh, yeah. with a few new pieces. Okay. And I started um, a collection that I'm titling Sex Education. Um, the first few pieces are called Practice, Make Perfect, Practice Makes Perfect and um, Raw Banana. They're, <laughs> okay. they're paintings of bananas. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. Yes. They're paintings of bananas with condoms on them and my oh, that's that was? I didn't yeah know that was, so. <laughs> everyone else got it isis oh. <laughs> so, so actually, 
I didn't catch we don't that. always get it. So, <laughs> Ashley, will you do a, uh, do you plan to, to do pieces to show the male? The male in society with how they deal with sex, or is, we were is, we were gonna do some men and stuff. Right? Yeah, I actually started a few pieces. I just didn't bring them to the show. Okay. I'm saving them for something later. So, okay. so yeah. if someone wants to see your art or well, to see a sample of your, we're art. definitely gonna keep doing shows together or separately, whichever one. But um, we have a few shows coming up. Coming up, I actually have a show coming up um this September in Brooklyn. Um, so I can give you the information, okay. but I mean, now she's going to do some shows too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and how, how about on the social networking? Well, I have a blog yeah. called Swaby Chic, which is my last name. S-W-A-B-Y, Swaby Chic, blogspot.com. Okay. Dot com. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and she has a blog. I also have a blog. It's Ashley Simone dot blogspot dot com. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're on Facebook, yes. Isis Samuel Swaby and Ashley Simone Ashley Smith. Ashley Simone Smith. It's Simone with the C. Simone with the C. <laughs> C I M O N E. <laughs> well, I definitely want to thank both of you, visual artists. And let me get your name right. Isis Swaby, aka Isart. Did I get it right? Isart. Isart. Yes. Correct me, please. <laughs> Isis Swavy, a.k.a. Isart. 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 What am I saying wrong? <laughs> Isart. Isart, okay. Isart. Isart, okay. Isis Swavy, a.k.a. Isart. And Ashley Simone, and that's with a C. With Thanks a C, yes. <laughs> Thank, you <for, laughs> Thank you for coming on Straight Up, and please look for their art. Um, go to Straight Up Stella O on YouTube. You will see this show, this episode, as well as their lovely art. Thank you so much. Do. All you got to do.